if you were hanging out in my channel you will notice that i enjoy showcasing and working with some kind of situs beacons implants and so on and we're gonna do it again the c2 framework i'm going to present now i initially found it in my discord server and the guys there sh shared it so don't miss out join the discord server we share a lot of things there now i am really not prepared about showcasing this c2 so we're gonna dive in through anything we're gonna start with the introduction we're gonna start with the installation we're gonna install that thing and we can see how it works so let's start right off the bat we have course for educational purpose only as this video is youtube thank you for my strike then we have the installation now we don't really have a detail so a c2 framework built for my bachelor's thesis so that's a bachelor's project which is nice so we can expect yeah work in progress expect bugs and missing features that's normal of course if i found something i'm gonna report it to you buddy don't worry now the installation to get the dependencies installed and the server ready to go it needs to run this setup script in a few manual commands so we're gonna need to do get to first clone the repository so i'm gonna go here do sudo dash i cd into opt and then do git clone primus c2 all right cd into primus c2 then let's do sudo ch mod plus x and setup.sh then do source setup.py and run the setup script with source oh, all right maybe i need to run that first so let's do setup.sh it's going to install dependencies i really hope that's not a backdoor but you know that vm is not that important to me so it no, does not really matter so let's see what's going to get installed it looks to me as some kind of update so let's give it a little bit of time all right now the c2 seems to have installed although i see some kind of errors now let's continue and try to do that so source setup.py we don't have such things inside so uh we're gonna just move on so we we have to install the needed nim packages so let's do that i really hope it does not take that much time and then we have to run python 3 server.py from this c2 folder so inside here we have a c2 folder there all right after running the server i think should be enough now let's hope we don't encounter any kind of issues with, uh, after that now the features this thing has are to be honest uh, i'm impressed by the the needs of where this c2 is built so based on its bachelor's defense it's like it has like nim implant which i count as something more advanced we have AMZ bypass, we have PowerShell in the managed run space, which is also nice. I think this is something like a power peak in Mythic. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to click the top right corner. Then you have the get AV, get current AV products, all right. We have PowerShell download cradle, of course, dynamic import generation, and automated redirector setup via digital ocean VPS. That's another huge thing now we have the usage option but before the usage let's see if we're gonna get to it so let's see into c2 all right let's do lsla now let's do python 3 server.py and bam the first ever let's try pip3 install random name come on do we have different branches mm, view all Come on, what happened with my internet? Nope, that's the main one and the only one. So uh, we don't have like a dev branch, so that definitely needs to get updated. Now, that looks to be nice. Let's run that and well, all right, we are inside. So key, we have a key for the session. We have creating generating pause directory, creating payloads directory, and we have enter a command. Let's do help. And we have, I believe the same output. Yep, we have. Now let's proceed into the part where we generate an implant, transfer the implant, and let's see what we can do with this C2 framework. All right, let's now analyze the options we have. We have the first option is being listeners minus G. So generate a new listener on desired interface. All right, can I do help listeners? Nope, just help. Yep, so listeners minus H. Nope, listeners, listeners G. 
so you guys you guys have a lot to do here now let's see if it works just the basics now let's do interface and let's see eth zero i believe is mine now the port has turned to be 9999 something all right now that looks to be working but now how do i get to generate oh, all right there it is so we have the server running successfully i'm gonna try to open that in my browser but why does it have the port 8999 beside of 9999 that's super strange or maybe that's because of the it hosts a, a python server there yeah that's most likely the case so we have the beacon callbacks on this ip and on this ip we can host things which is nice i i appreciate that now on the help let's do nim plant i believe that's the thing yeah it's made an interactive like super easy like set toolkit you just press one two three and youtube don't ban me for for saying the name of set toolkit please now uh then we have the listener address all right and bam so first ever appeared let's run it again but before that let's do ssn otp to see if the server is running and we have no server running so we have to start the thing from the very beginning so let's do listeners minus g let's do interface ETH 0 9999 all right come on all right now let's do help let's do nimplant so can i generate it with any other beacon or is it just him all right i think it's just him now let's do other ip let's do 192.168.74.134 and it's not working again all right so after a little bit of debugging i found the issue in that since that's not the official project or something super comprehensive it is hardcoded and designed to be cloned as the user's home directory so if you clone that in your home directory no matter if you are root or a normal user this thing would automatically work because that's how it's designed initially i tried to go there and try to fix all the past issues but they were a lot so i decided to, to just stick with how it's built and clone it in my home repository so as you can see i'm in slash root i can do cd prima c2 and all my code is there and now it turned out to work so uh we're gonna perform the steps one more time starting from the beginning then we're gonna go there connect our windows 10 client and let's see what this c2 can do so i'm gonna go into the c2 then python 3 server.py now help let's do listeners minus g interface eth 0 9999 as always as before it's gonna start the callback interface and then the python https server then i'm gonna do help nimplant specify one for listener address and the cool thing about that is it's just gonna get the listener address automatically it's gonna generate the exe binary with a random name which to be honest i enjoy and it's gonna be automatically hosted with the python HTTPS server which is a nice automation of the things now for a bachelor's project that thing is really nice at least so far so usually this takes some time so uh, i'm gonna just pause the video and i'll be right back as soon as it's done all right it was not that bad and it finished now so with that being said we looks like are ready for our action so i'm gonna just uh log into my windows 10 client i think i typed the password correctly i hope so and it is now I'm gonna open a page and I'm just gonna download the implant. So uh, by the way, my defender should be up and running because I just restarted the box. So one to one sixty-eight. Yeah, it remembers my IP. All right, all right. Go on the generate implants and then download Chucky Mercury.exe. I enjoy the naming convention. Now let's see if the defender is being actually turned on. So manage settings. It, it is so i think it should be nice if we test it with defender on so we can see in runtime will this get detected or not so i'm gonna keep that thing anyway 
I'm gonna open a PowerShell window and by downloading it, no alerts were popped whatsoever. So, uh, so far it looks nice. I'm gonna sit into downloads and I'm gonna just execute that. So, uh, we don't see any kind of uh, output on the terminal. But I hope we have a session, so I'm going to go back on my Kali machine. Wait for a little bit of time and there we are, we have a session now. So here I need to mention something explicitly and that is the IP of my client. So by default, this C2 framework is using the external IP. So if you get your clients connected, you're gonna see the external IP here. Which in my case is not good because I don't want to get my IP leaked. So for that case, I went to the source code and make sure I hard code it my IP address. But if you guys are using the C2, as soon as the client connects to the server, you're going to see the public IP of the client itself. With that being said, we can go and start issuing commands and let's see how that C2 behaves. All right, so the first thing I have to do is to somehow connect to the session, right? So I can do sessions minus L and that's going to print all the available sessions. In that case, it's just one. We have the session number. We have the username, admin status, status of the beacon. We have the target, the operational system, which I'm not sure it's needed because the C2 works only for Windows. And then the, the last check in time. So I see a few ways with engaging with that. So we have enter callback session and enter callback session they pretty much do quite the same thing so let's just do use one since we have to type less and now here comes the big deal if i do help we can see the very same help menu which in my opinion is not useful that much i was expecting something like if i do help it's gonna give me a help menu dedicated to the beacons and the implant and what commands I can run. So it looks like all the commands I have are explained here. And yeah, we have the session command. So we can pretty much do background, we can do exit, we can do get AV, and then we can run any PowerShell command. So it's kind of twisted because it uses NIM. That NIM is get compiled and that NIM uses AMZ bypass and it's heavy PowerShell based. So the whole implant, it's only doing PowerShell, which in one case is good, in one case is not that good, but trust me, for a batch of project, it's pretty decent. So let's try the commands. Let's just do get AV. And then we have Windows Defender. Is it case sensitive? No. Nope, it's not. So we have an error. Uh, we have Windows Defender. All right, then let's try Porsche. Who am I? All right, and that's it. Push IP config. What's gonna happen if I do IP config on its own? Oh, it works. So I can direct issue commands here. I can do who am I? Oh, nice, nice. So with that being said, actually, that's all we can do. So we can run PowerShell commands. We have some automation for PowerShell download Credo, but we can obviously do that manually, which is, in my opinion, the best things to do. So we are kind of limited to the PowerShell thing. We don't have any world assemblies. We don't have any automatic reflection. We don't have any execute P or any kind of modules for lateral movement. But on, on the other hand, that thing is evasive. It bypass window defender. And let's see how many things we can bypass with that. Of course, by your respect to the C2, to the creator of the C2, I'm not going to upload the beacon in virus total, but to anti-scan me and this can that be now let's cross the fingers because there's a strange ritual each time i'm shooting the video the api of anti scan is not working so let's hope that's not the case now all right chucky mercury open that cross finger scan file and again it's not working so i'm gonna give it a little bit of time uh, we i'm gonna wait for it to be tested again and i will see if that thing just begins to work at some point <laughs> for a bachelor's project this c2 framework works pretty nice i enjoyed its evasiveness rates and even though you do not have that many stuff like well, automatic world of assemblies peace uh running stuff in memory and so on you can do them manually and you can make that thing work it's heavily partial based because at least from what I saw, you can only run PowerShell stuff there, but you know, for a bachelor's project, this thing works pretty nice. I highly enjoy it, and I will see this thing get better in future. 
feel free to subscribe if you have further appreciation for my channel feel free to become my patreon i highly appreciate every single one of you and if you have any topics or questions drop them right in the comments and i will see you right in the next one